All right, all right. Hi, everyone. Neil JT here, and we are back with another video. The secret to completely transform your life. Obviously, this looks like a lot of things. It's not just one secret, but it is one secret. This is going to be my analogy for the entire video. I'm going to use fitness because fitness is probably what I know the most about. <laughs> um, but when I think about the top 10 things for fitness to completely change my life, this is my list of what I came up with. Your list might be completely different. You could add uh, 20 more things on here that you could add to transforming someone's life. But these are just like what I think off the top of my head. The top 10, if I was to pick, like if you do these 10 things, you're going to transform. So going through it real quick, I put down 20 to 30 grams protein per meal, four to five meals a day, fasted cardio, post-workout cardio, one gallon of water, gym three to five days, lift heavy, supplements, sleep seven to eight hours, stretch, ice, rest, recovery, and go to failure. So if you had to pick one of these to only do one to transform your life, what would it be? For me, I would say, mm, I'd say gym three to five days a week. And so this is the problem. This is, this is where the, the issue lies with transforming your life. Go purple. I love purple. So all of these are one. One. One percent. They'll make you one percent better. So if you eat 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal for a year, you'll be one percent better. But these all go hand in hand. If you're trying to transform your whole life, you're not just going to do one thing. This is like getting a Toyota Corolla and there's one tire on it. You can't do shit, right? But then say, let's say, uh, all right, we got 20 to 30 gram protein per meal. And we're going to do gym three to five days a week. All right, now our Toyota Corolla has four tires. We still don't really have much movement. So we need some gasoline to go in the car. Four to five meals a day. Energy. All right, now we're getting somewhere. We're moving. We're on the roll. You get the point is what I'm trying to make. So everything adds up to only just a little bit, 1% better at the end of a year. I just like to say a year because that's where a huge change would take place. But if you started out and you did just one thing, you know, you'd be a Toyota Corolla. But if you did all of these things, you'd be a Ferrari at the end of the year. You'd be a freaking uh, spaceship. <laughs> like if you did all of this for a year dedicated you would completely transform. Now, this is the analogy for fitness, but how do we do that for our entire life? Well, well, let me show you here. I love this white paper. Should have had these in school. Would have saved on erasers. <laughs> so, this is my top 10 that I needed to do to transform my life. So this, your list might be totally different. You might have smoking, uh, I don't know, late night eating, just, I don't, I don't know, D different habits for different people. But this is what my main list was that I knew I needed to give up in order to completely transform my life. And so this is no different than what I just showed you for the fitness. 1%, everything is 1% better. If you are like, I wanna change my life, I wanna be better, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give up caffeine and then you give up caffeine, okay, whoop do you fucking do? Like, yeah, you give up caffeine, good for you, like you drank caffeine for 10 years, it is difficult to do, but how is that gonna, in the big picture, change everything? Like, sure, you might have uh, more sustainable long-term energy through the day, you might get better sleep, uh, you might not be as moody, you don't have crashes, your blood sugar doesn't spike, etc., etc., etc. But if you're trying to completely transform your life, going from an old identity to a new identity, that's 1%. Like at the end of the year, you just got 1% better. We want to go from Toyota to Ferrari. So we need to compile a list of all of our bad habits. Maybe not even necessarily bad habits, but uh, things, patterns we do throughout the day that only contribute to our old identity of who we used to be. So we're trying to become a completely new person, 
only way to do that is to change everything. Everything. Everything you've ever done. So for me, caffeine, like I said, I was a heroin addict in 2015. I think from 2013 to 2015 is where, where I was seriously into hardcore drugs. Um, it started out with alcohol in college, and then I had a girlfriend, and her dad hurt his back, and uh, she had pain, pain pills, uh, lower tabs, and we started messing around with those, and then it turned into ecstasy, MDMA, uh, <laughs> LSD, mushrooms, and so I was kind of like in the fun stuff. I wasn't like messing around, but then like uh, I took it to a whole nother level, and it went into ben benzodiazepines, and uh, which is Xanax and Klonopin. And then it turned into uh, pills, all opiates, uh, Oxycontin, Morphine, Opana, Dilaudid. Um, so I always used to crush them up. Snorted probably 10,000 pills in my life. Uh, I never shot heroin. So I, I guess technically I shouldn't say I was a heroin addict. I was an opiate addict because I crushed up all the pills and snorted them. I never went to the level of shooting it. Never liked needles. But um, yeah, so I did that for, for a while. And from that, fast forward, what is that, nine years ago, eight years ago, still I've had issues with substances, not bad substances, but caffeine specifically because I have an addictive personality, especially even when I was a bodybuilder and I did steroids, I have an addictive personality. So I was like, I always need to take something. I always need to, even if I didn't necessarily feel it, you know, like I wasn't like, bam, yeah, ooh, feel it, but like, I knew that I was taking something, it made me feel like I was taking something. Like, I still have that addictive personality. So it's like, okay, I'm good, I'm taking something. That means I'm, I'm something's different. I'm changing reality or something, I don't know. My brain was fucked up. Point being, for me, caffeine was a big one. I had to get rid of it. So it's been two months now, over two months. And I will say everything I just said about the caffeine, better sleep, um, I wake up and I'm not like groggy in the morning at all. I can like get up and I just, it's, I guess it's different because there's no routine now. It's like, I miss the taste of coffee. Like my brain doesn't miss the effect of coffee. I just miss the taste. Like when I smell people drinking coffee, I'm like, oh, I love a coffee. Mm. But I don't got it anymore. I tried to do tea, uh, like non-caffeinated tea. It just doesn't hit the same. It's not the same. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that was, there's some benefits for sure for that. But again, 1%. It's helping me rewire my brain. Porn. That was a big one for me. That was since I was 13 years old. I'm 34. So math. So what's that? 20 years. Two decades. 21 years. Two decades I was looking at porn. So that's a huge one because that just desensitizes you to, to everything. Even when I was in relationships, long-term relationships, still looked at porn every day. Is not good. Uh, not good for a long-term relationship. So that was a big one. Again, these are both things of my whole life, patterns. So I got rid of those. Processed food and sugar, that was the easiest on this list for me. Um, because I was a fitness junkie uh, for so long and am really into fitness, processed food and sugar was just like, meh, okay, psh, changed it a couple days, good to go. These, I'm going to wait on these ones because those need some explanation. TV like I talked about in the last video, that I thought was going to be difficult, but actually wasn't. Um, surprising. You just have to fill your time. When when you have things that you need to change, but they take up a lot of time during your day, like caffeine doesn't, coffee doesn't take up time. That's just a morning. It's a ritual. But TV, if you're used to watching two hours of Netflix before bed every night, then you need to find something to replace that. For me, it was journaling and reading. And for me, reading is hard. I'm so friggin' used to YouTube and everything else that like trying to sit and read a book, my brain is like, doesn't want to stay in the moment. Like I'm in the future thinking about this, this, and this, this, and like 500 other things. I'm like, I'd rather just watch something. So it's still, I'm still getting used to trying to read, but that's what replaced a TV for me. Um, it's been a month now for t no TV. Social media. Uh, I was bad with social media for a while on um, my ego. Um, I've been killing my ego slowly for the past, uh, six months and my ego with social media was so high, especially when I was really into fitness. I remember I built up to 80 something thousand followers at, at one point 
And I was just all about, oh, yeah, who's DMing me and, like, this and this. And every, every single thing I was doing in the day and, like, posting, I was, like, living on my iPhone. And uh, this past two years when I moved from New York to Colorado, or two and a half years, I wasn't really on social media. I posted a few pictures here and there. But I was really, like, I came out of the fitness and I wasn't going as hard. It, from 2019 when I stopped bodybuilding, I kind of lost my way and I was still working out and doing a lot of stuff, but I was not like how I look now or how I looked when I was really fit. And so I just kind of fell off the wagon for the social media. But then what I always realized is I would just go on and see what everyone else is doing in their life. Whoa, what's, what's really doing? What's their story? Oh, it looks like they're having a good life. And then with the ego, your ego is adding comparison. So now I'm comparing myself to other people's lives and it's like, then we're not living in the moment. So I realize I'm like, social media has to go. So the past couple months, I got rid of everything. Uh, I've signed into Instagram twice in the past four months. It's been two months, though, since I've signed in. And Snapchat, same thing. It's been two months. And yeah, there's just it, it just takes up so much time. It's terrible for you. Like I can see for business purposes or YouTube and like if you set like a schedule to yourself, you're like, hey, I'm only going to do this from eight to 10. I do that for YouTube at night. That's my TV. I don't watch like movies or anything. I'm only learning any about meditation, yoga, exercise, stuff like that. But I'll do uh, an hour to two hours every night of YouTube. That's how I do it. So if I was to ever go back to social media, have an Instagram where I was like commenting or doing business stuff and showing people what I was doing through the day. I would only uh, go on for a certain set time. I would keep myself very strict, like, you know, eight to 10 every night or whatever it would be. Um, so that's where that was with that. And then alcohol and drugs. <laughs> this is kind of a confusing one for me. Alcohol I've, I, the past five years has not been a big deal for me. Um, after my serious drug addiction, alcohol has kind of been just whatever to me. I've had my times, like I had one beer on July 4th, uh, this, this year. And then I had a glass of wine for Christmas and a glass of wine for Halloween. I believe that's all I've had for this year, like full 12 months, not like six months. Um, drugs. Uh, I was smoking marijuana <laughs> before bed indicas to sleep. Um, but I, I cut that out. That's been a month as well. And I definitely, it is harder to sleep for sure. I'm so used to using drugs, melatonin, CBD, um, all that kind of stuff to sleep. So that, that one's a tough one for me. I also do microdosing with uh, psilocybin, mushrooms. Um, I haven't been doing it. I pushed it pretty hard. At, uh, like again, microdosing and using mushrooms or LSD I would take it in a controlled setting not to trip. Like I have tripped, like I've done eight trips, full trips in the past couple of months, um, full doses. And I always set an intention. It's not like I'm going out in the world and like, oh, that looks cool. Look at my hand, like, whoa. No, it's not like that at all. I'll, I'll set my intention. Like I said, I'm in a transformation period. So I'll be like, okay, my intention going into this right before I'm about to take it, I'm gonna be like, Show me what my deepest traumas are and how to fix them. Boop. Take the microdose and then I'll sit and meditate and try and go through it that way. Um, I stopped doing that though. It's been a month for that because I pushed it too hard and I had I was getting great results. I was completely transforming my brain. Everything was going great. And uh, I did a microdose or an, <laughs> I did a, a regular dose on Monday, Wednesday, Friday of a strain called golden teacher which is like um the average i guess the average amount of psilocybin and then there's a strain called penis envy <laughs> it's a strange funny name but this uh mushroom came from the amazon and is the strongest mushroom you can take and you it's like four to five times stronger than other mushrooms and like i had researched it and i was like oh like even like the joe rogan and everyone they talk about how it's like really intense and i'm like okay i'm gonna take a small amount so I took like a half a gram, which I was like, oh, that's gonna, that's, that'll be just like a normal trip. <sighs> Holy shit. It was, bam, blast me off into outer space. I was not ready for it. And it was, it was intense. So point being is I kind of went backwards from that because it was so much. I was 
not ready and I compounded the effects of all the trips during that week. So it actually ended up hurting me. So <laughs> we got rid of that because I realized I'm like, that can go straight with the caffeine for me for addiction for substances, even though psilocybin, LSD, that kind of stuff is not addictive. Um, but still, I was pushing it to because I'm addicted to transform my body. So we push that out. So this is my 10 and <laughs> these three right here, the masturbation, ejaculation, and the sex. I think you can say ejaculation porn on YouTube. I hope you can. Um, for me, in my 20s, um, I, slept, I slept around a lot. You know, not a saint, not a good boy. Um, uh, 2019, I got a house with a girl, dog, white picket fence, tried to settle down, do that whole thing, and um, just wasn't, wasn't for me. But what I realized when you're trying to focus and change your entire life, these things take up so much time and scientifically for a man this is different for a woman but for a man masturbation and ejaculation when a man ejaculates that's his life force that's his seed that's the, the king seed that's what makes everything grow you, you cannot duplicate semen you can duplicate a, a fetus a female fetus but you cannot duplicate semen that is the life force on this planet so like think about it when you're having sex and the man uh, ejaculates, he's like done, right? You're like, oh, pff, phew, done. Or, you know, sometimes two or three times. If, if you can do three times, you're, uh, you're, wow, you're up there. But for a woman, she like ejaculates and she's good to go 10 more, 10 more times. And even they're, sometimes they're getting even more energy. They're like, keep going up. It's like they're taking your energy and they get more energy. But as a man, you lose energy. So when you lose your life force, you lose your energy. You can't focus on nothing. You're like ready to go to bed after that. So it's the same thing with masturbation and that tied together. If you're ejaculating every day, you're going to be low energy. And I can attest for this. I have not ejaculated or masturbated or had sex in two months. I haven't had sex in almost two years, a year and a half. Um, but, uh, not ejaculating that, that it's hard. That takes extreme willpower and fortification of your brain, but giving that up, you'll be able to focus so much more because as a man with testosterone and everything, it's just like sex, 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 girl, gym, hot, hot girl. Oh, look at that booty, blah, blah. It's like all the time. But when you give that up, it's like all that energy you use to focus on females is now inside you you're just filled with like this life force and you're like shit what do i do with it and you learn to transmute it which i'll talk in another video but essentially you just have to learn how to change that energy into something else a different form to give you a result so for me it was like okay i'm gonna start reading i'm gonna start journaling i'm gonna start going really hard in the gym i'm gonna start a youtube channel again i'm gonna start this i'm gonna start my third company it was just like so much energy now freed up because of that. So for the sex, that's my choice for me. Um, like I said, it's been a year and a half. But if you're married, like have sex. That's why God put us on this planet to procreate, you know? But like, I'm never gonna have sex again just with random people. Like there's no point. I'm, I'm at the point now where it's, I'm ready to just settle down and like be with someone that I wanna be with forever. And that's who I wanna, share it with and like I look at myself as a king now and I want a queen so it's like I don't like when people are just sleeping around and stuff it's like that's not high quality to me like I'm high quality I'm holding all of my stuff in for me because I value myself and I want to have a high value woman that's how I look at it and I don't look down on anyone or anything this is like very very new for me but essentially these are the 10 things for me that like I, I'm checking off all the boxes. This is what's catapulting me forward. And every day I wake up better and better every day. It's absolutely crazy. And like I talked about in the other video, 21 days, you do your list of 10 things, five things, eight things, whatever for 21 days. In 21 days, you're going to be a completely different person. I promise you, you have to be like, think about your whole life, your identity you change all of that for three weeks, like not just one thing, you change all of it, you are not the same person. Every day I wake up, I'm a little bit different. I notice it. 
friends notice it, family notices it. Like it's, it's crazy, but this is what you have to do in order to transform or ascend to your higher self, the person you are meant to be in life. And I believe we all have that power to get there. It's just that society has put us all in this way of living like this is how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to jerk off every day. You're supposed to look at porn. Like that's not how it's been that the past that's only been like the past what, three, four decades? Like, we're just getting more and more into the societal norms. We have to break free of that stuff and become who we truly are meant to be. And when everyone's doing that and you're seeing that, it's very difficult to get to your level. That's why I'm very isolated right now. I have no friends. Uh, I have two. I have two friends. And I don't see them often. So I'm always isolated because... When people come around me that are doing all of these things or like doing Instagram or having sex with random people, if they come in my vicinity, I can feel their and I have so much energy inside me from changing my life, not ejaculating, not doing anything, that when people come into my life, I can feel their bad energy. I can feel them taking my energy. So I'm very aware of that and I have to be like, Shh, oh, nope, got to back up, got to do my own thing. Eventually... When everything becomes mastered and you are your new identity and you're whole and complete, then you're good. Then people that are doing the societal, everything can still come into your life and it's not going to affect you because you're whole and complete. But you're still not going to want to be around those types of people. If you're this type of person and they're the opposite, you're not going to want to be around them. You're not. So when you change, I'm going to say this is one of the biggest things. Expect. Expect 90% of your friends and family to fall off. It's sad to say, but it has to happen. For you to be your best self and to give your gift to the world, like our responsibility as human beings is to give our gift, whatever that is. So we need to give that to the world. And you're not doing a service to this world if you're holding on to the true self of who you could be. So I know that was a lot. That was all over the place. But uh, I hope that was insightful for you guys. I have way, way... Way more videos in mind coming up that I'm going to attach to all these different things and synchronize it. But this is just what I'm doing right now and how people can utilize that to better their own lives and make their own list and start checking off the boxes. And you don't have to do everything at once. I'm just that type. I'm a zero or a hundred person. I'm like, oh, do you want to get in shape? I'll be like, yeah, I'm going to do a bodybuilding show. Like, I'll just, I jump. I'm like zero or a hundred. There's no like, yeah, I'll go to the gym three to five days. It's like, nope. All right. I'm giving up this, 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 this. I'm changing my whole life. That's who I am. That's just my personality. So like when I see something and I'm ready, I'm like, I'm going to change. I'm going full balls in. That's, there is no backup. There's no backup plan. I'm just going. So that's just me, but you do not have to do it all in sequence. If you're living a busy life or whatever, do one thing for 21 days, make it a habit. Then do your next thing, 21 days, and just do it slowly. Do it whatever works best for you. So again, I'm Neil JT, and thank you guys for watching. Please hit that like button and subscribe. I have like five subscribers now, but whatever. I'm not doing this for the likes of subscribers. I'm doing this to help people change their lives because I see how much my life is changing now, and all I want is the best for everyone else. So take care, guys.